Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm taking a look at five relatively common items, but all of them share one unusual feature and that is that they fold. Now everyone might have their own reasons why they might want a folding version of some of these, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to test them out and see if they really work in today's video. All right, so without further delay, let's get right to the first item, which is a Ray-Ban folding sunglasses. When I first decided I was gonna do a video of folding gadgets, I quickly ran across these, which are the folding Ray-Ban Wayfarers sunglasses. Now to me, the Ray-Ban Wayfarers remind me of two of my favorite movies from the 80s, which would be the Blues Brothers and Risky Business with Tom Cruise. I'm pretty sure I've had some knockoff Ray-Ban Wayfarers in my life. I don't know if I ever actually had an original pair because it was so expensive. Let's first take a look at the unboxing and see how that went. I paid 161 bucks for these. Not your discount uh, Walmart sunglasses here. Nicely packaged, I'll say that. I want to be careful I don't break my $161 glasses here. That is pretty compact. So the claims of this model from the original Wayfarer glasses, but this one folds for the ultimate portability. Does not sacrifice durability. Simply wear, fold, unfold, and wear again. And normally I, I check out the reviews on Amazon, but there was actually more reviews for this on the Ray-Ban website. Uh, the pros in there say it's good for travel, good quality, attractive design. Someone said they even saved their life. Uh, I did find a few cons. Someone said they broke easily. Someone also said it was a pain to unfold. Is it? I don't know. Where it folds doesn't really stand out too much. And here's the, the hinge on the inside. So this is how the, the bridge folds. And really when it's folded, there isn't much of an obvious sign that it can even fold. Right, so next up, I wanted to try these out in bright daylight, which is very easy to find here in Las Vegas. And here's what happened there. Pulling them out of the case. The way these are set up is that this never actually touches the lens. You would think it might because it folds right against it, but it doesn't. It stops right before it hits the lens. Here we go. Now we're talking. Now I was in high school, all the preppies, which we used to call them preppies. Is that a bad word? I don't even know. It wasn't back then. Preps? I don't know. We, they'd always have their collar up when they had the Ray-Bans on. So I, I don't remember how they exactly did it, but I remember all the guys with Ray-Bans always had their collars up. So, I wasn't one of those guys though. I was, I was more of a rocker, although I hung around a lot of the preps though. So let me see, first impressions. I don't know how I got off on tangent, but the first impressions here is it looks nice. Let me see, compared to my other glasses. The, the normal sunglasses that I wear have kind of a more of a, just a darkened tint to them. These have a very slight green to them. Not in a bad way. Uh, it, it does seem like it's slightly greener than the ones I'm used to. The lenses are absolutely spectacular. They're perfect. This doesn't feel like the fold in the frame is going to be an issue at all. You only see it. I'm, I'm looking in the mirror. I don't even see where it folds. I'd have to look really closely. I think most people... Will, they would see you wearing these wouldn't realize these are folding sunglasses here you can see how dark they are what the tent is uh see if you like that or not i like it i think it looks pretty good i find they're kind of in the middle as far as darkness goes that the tent doesn't bother me at all so you know I think they're... so far so good and i do like this case i would if i was going to take these traveling with me this would fit in a backpack really nicely i wouldn't worry about it getting scratched either it takes up you know half the size of a, of a normal sunglasses case if you really tie on space that's good for that so with everything else in this video i'm going to use it for a week and then at the end i'll let you know how it's going my first impression is they feel perfectly fine i don't know if these are worth 160 bucks i mean for for plastic frames but you know it's it, it, the, the ray-bans logo looks nice there doesn't it i'm sure i'll impress absolutely nobody by wearing them but let me take a quick drive and see how they look uh, in a real world situation as far as a first impression goes they work great i mean they're pretty standard pair of sunglasses once you've lost an expensive pair of sunglasses you're not really apt to want to buy another one but i'm going to keep using these and i will let you know how they go after a week speaking of tom cruise and risky business a lot of people remember that famous scene where he's dancing in his underwear with a button-up shirt on. But a lot of people remember him wearing a white shirt and Ray-Ban Wayfarers. But if you watch the movie, he was wearing a pink shirt and had no sunglasses on. Now, some people say that's a Mandela effect. Some people think that's just mass misremembering that. Not really that relevant to this video, but kind of an interesting side note. I was originally going to wear these for about a week while working on this video. It's, this video is stretched out to three weeks now. I'm Three weeks I've been wearing these every, every day. I've been wearing them on walks 
I've played basketball on them. I've ordered food in them. I, I've worn them pretty much everywhere. I've been wearing my sunglasses around Las Vegas. So I usually put my sunglasses either on my head or on my collar. But with these, I've, I've still been putting them in the case because it's, it's pretty quick to put them in the case. They got two folds there, I guess three folds. I mean, that was pretty quick. I'm not sure if I'm putting them in the case because the case is just so convenient because it is pretty convenient to have that small of a case in your pocket or if I don't want to scratch my $160 sunglasses. It is nice to have a, this convenient case as opposed to your collar or forehead where it could fall off. So in the end, I'm a bit torn about these sunglasses. They work perfectly fine. The folding feature is very nice. Uh, they're very, they're beautiful lenses. They look they look very nice. But 160 bucks, that's a tough sell, man. It's like I don't I've never spent that much on a pair of sunglasses. I'm kind of a cheap sunglasses kind of guy, you know, like ZZ Top, cheap sunglasses for me. I should point out I got these direct from the Ray-Ban website. I did not get them anywhere else online because there's so many counterfeits of these out there. I wanted to make sure I got the real thing. I do think that anybody who gets these will like them very much. I'm just not sure a lot of people will want to spend that much on a pair of sunglasses. If you want a pair of folding sunglasses and you don't mind spending a few extra bucks for top quality, these are a great choice. This is a folding Bluetooth keyboard. Let's first take a look at the unboxing and see how that went. All right, look at that. I'll look this over a little bit. Here we go. All right, the claims are that it's a Bluetooth keyboard. It has an included phone holder right here. Quiet keys, good for travel. Compatible with Android, iOS, and Windows. They can fit into a pocket or a backpack, folded to turn off. No batteries required because it's rechargeable. People on Amazon who liked it said it was compact, responsive typing with no lag and easy to sync. Now, there weren't a lot of cons on it, but a few people said it stopped working uh, after a short period of time, so I'll have to check that out. All right, so I wanted to film my test after trying it out for a while because this is something that's gonna take some getting used to, and I never quite got used to it, and here's what happened. And let me tell you what I like and don't like about this keyboard. First up, what I like about it. Number one is look at the size of this thing. It's very compact, very thin, barely bigger than a phone. It's, it, it folds down nicely. When you compare it to the Bluetooth keyboard I've been using for the last several years, it's, it's much smaller. This obviously doesn't fold. This is way heavier. The keys feel nice under my fingers. Pairing was easy. You just hit the connect button, show up my phone, connect it easily, no problem. So those are the things that I, I like about it. Now here's, here's what I don't like about it. Number one, there is no on off switch, which is not only a big deal, but if you forget to close it, the battery's gonna drain. I've had that happen twice to me already or I used it, slid it off to the side, didn't close it, and then it was dead the next day. It just stayed connected to my phone the entire time. The other thing I don't like about it is this gap right here in the middle. Now, if you're used to using a split keyboard, it's not so much of a problem, but for me, I'm not used to using that kind of keyboard. So I continually find myself tapping on this kind of like no man's land here. Now, the, probably the biggest problem right now to me is the B key. If you look at this keyboard, the B is right in between the G and the H. An old school keyboard like this, the B is right between the G and the H. I, I type the B with my right hand, which is I think incorrect, but a lot, a lot of people do that. So I have to kind of reach over. Finally, what I don't like about it is how responsive it is when you type. Uh, I'll show you uh, what I'm typing over here. Let me test out this blue. See, there's the B I, got, I can hit. Bluetooth key, I missed the K, keyboard. Here's the B to see how it compares to, C didn't hit the, I hit the C, didn't get it. The C was missing. Compares to my, didn't get the Y, Logitech version. Didn't get the N. I'm missing a lot of keys here. Part of the reason I missed the Y is because look how small this Y is. Don't like how, you have this giant T and this small Y. So this gap is making the Y smaller, so I'm missing that. Part of it is the responsive, I missed that V. This and the other part is just not, I'm missing this N, I'm missing not being used to it. Uh, see, I, I'm just struggling to type on this. Ah, I can't, I can't get the last letter. Now, let me, let me switch over to my other one. This Bluetooth keyboard is much heavier. I don't like it as much for travel. It does have an on-off switch and you can power three different devices. I'm gonna type the same thing here and see how it goes. Let me test out this Bluetooth keyboard 
to see how it compares to my Logitech version. Is the responsiveness and the other part is just not being used to it. I just feel like I can type much better on this one. Like I typed, part of it is just being used to it. And the other part, I just don't feel like the keys are quite as responsive. There are times I know I've typed certain letters and they don't show up there. So it is a trade-off. You might have to slow down your typing, which I don't like to slow down my typing, but if you don't mind slowing down your typing and you want something compact, it might work for you. If you like speed and accuracy, I'd go with something a little bit different like this. The final thought about this one also is I've sat on my bed to type in it and when it sits on my lap, it kind of does this because it's not rigid. You know, this one sits on my lap, it stays flat. This one, if you have it on your bed or on a pillow, it kind of it kind of moves around a little bit. So you, you find yourself typing on a certain angle, which some people may not mind. I don't like that. Here's an example where I would actually do it in this situation where I've got it on my lap. Uh, this keyboard works perfectly. I can type in here. This one, if I wanted to have it on the road, I mean, it's like, it's kind of, it's because it's not rigid and it falls in the middle, it's, it's a little bit awkward. So far, the only thing that this is better at is being compact. This is better at everything else. All right, so in the end, I really want to like this keyboard. I like some things about it. And look at this, it does, it actually does fit in your pocket. I mean, that's how cool is that, right? But to me, it's not close enough to a full-size keyboard that I'm used to. That's why I like my current Bluetooth keyboard because it feels like a full-size keyboard. Now, if you're already used to a keyboard that's split in the middle or that doesn't have high action, this may not be as much of a stretch for you. It's been a stretch for me, but I'm gonna keep using it because I want it to work because look how compact that is. But unfortunately, it's taken me a lot longer to get used to than I thought it would. I reviewed a product back in 2019 called the Pillow Pad. Well, this is the new version Pillow Pad Fold Away as seen on TV, new in 2021. It works kind of like the original, but this one actually folds and has a storage compartment. Let's take a look at the unboxing and then test it out. All right, let's take a look at the Pillow Pad Fold Away multi-angle soft tablet stand. Before I open this up, you might recall I've done the original Pillow Pad, which is looking a little bit worse for wear. I've used it a lot over the last couple of years. I even have this uh, this Wish knockoff that I've also been using lately. Now the original pillow pad and the knockoff just has this kind of like token storage pocket that it's not even really very useful. This one supposedly addresses that, so let's open it up. Material feels just like the original pillow pad. This feels like the same material as the case. Uh, they say it easily props up all your electronic devices, good for iPads, tablets, e-readers, magazines, books, and more. Stain resistant cover built-in storage compartment which isn't nearly as deep as i thought it was going to be they say this can hold a phone tablet or earbuds weighs two pounds now this is where i usually do the pros and cons on amazon but the only listing i found for this seems to have comments for different items so i'm not going to comment on that but i will say that it seems a bit stiff in opening up which may or may not be a big deal this looks like it's about a half inch deep not real deep i guess i was expecting a little bit deeper than that but it has the signature curved shelf where your item will go it does seem more compact i've used this a lot over the last couple of years if i could store a few things in there this might be a, a nice step up from the original our first test of the fold away pillow pad or is it pillow pad fold away i don't know but anyways one thing i also already noticed is that it has this clasp right here which is nice because it keeps it in place but it doesn't really keep it in place. Just minimal movement and it opens back up. It's not really the best clasp in the world. I probably wouldn't really care as long as it's kind of somewhat closed. But now when I use my normal pillow pad, first of first up I have to keep rotating until I find the right angle, which is this right here. Usually when I use the pillow pad, I have my phone here. That's what I use it for when I'm like just kicking back in bed. So a lot of times I'm, I'm up at night about to go to sleep. I get in bed and I watch some videos on my phone. Once in a while I read a book. I don't usually use the pillow pad for it. I mean, I have a couple times. I don't really find that it really adds much over just holding it in my hand. Let's try the start of the show here. All right, so what I like about it is you don't have to rotate it to find the right angle. You can just put it at the right angle. That's a good improvement. It's holding the book up, it's not, not falling over. That's good, let me see about this one. That one's good too. I don't really notice a, a huge, honestly, I don't know, notice much difference. Let me see if this phone, how this phone fits in here. This phone barely fits. It barely clears the top there. Look at that. So it is the thickness of my iPhone without a case on. 
With a thin case, it'll still clear it. I think if you had a really thick case, it may not. And of course, this doesn't really stay closed, but not a big deal, I guess, unless you really wanted that lash to stay. I also listened to my uh, earphones in the uh, at night. Let me see, will that fit in there? I guess you can kind of fit the earphones in there. More useful than the, than the pocket on the original. That pocket was kind of useless. I don't know, I think I'm feeling this. Um, let me try this out in the back seat of the car because I remember when I tried the original, it was kind of tight back there. Maybe this would be better in the back seat of the car. Let's go try that out. All right, so trying this out in the car, uh, the original pillow pad, I felt like I was a little bit cramped in here. It depends on your, how big your back seat is, I guess. So, you know, it's kind of this big, gigantic wedge that probably doesn't really need to be in your back seat. So it seems to me like this is a better option. Look how thin that is. Very compact, very sleek, and you can still use it on your lap so i mean and you can adjust it you can adjust the angle too i i think this is a this is definitely a logical upgrade from the original pillow pad it's adjustable it's more compact there's kind of minuscule storage in there speaking of their minuscule storage in the promotional materials they show it open with a bunch of stuff in there including some earbuds from apple look like and i have some right here and you can tell from the photo it looks like it's not going to close on those but let me see all right so look how much it sticks up above that that's not going to close yeah, I can't, I can't latch it. Can't latch it unless I, I guess I can, well, it's definitely not going to latch now. Look at this. Even that's too thick to go in there, even though they show it in the picture. But with that said, I do think this is much, especially for a back seat, much better. I put my phone and my folding keyboard in here and the keyboard sticks up just a little bit. I mean, you can still, you can still fold as long as you don't mind it not latching. So in the end, even though it has two kind of glaring problems with it, number one is the lash doesn't hold, and number two, the storage compartment is very shallow. But I still think it's an upgrade over the original, so I'm gonna keep using the pillow pad fold away and put the others back in the boneyard. This is the My Fold Away rechargeable fan as seen on TV. For the most part, it's just a regular fan, but its feature is that it actually folds, which goes nicely in this video. Let's first take a look at the unboxing and see how that went. Let's take a look at the My Fold Away rechargeable fan. Not a lot of info on the, on the box itself. All they do is say that it stands up to 40 inches and no batteries needed, three speeds. Let's check it out. Oh good, I got another arbitration agreement. I've been, I've been wanting to add to my collection. I got some instructions here, which I got to look over. First glance, it looks like it folds pretty compactly. Uh, let me see. I paid $31.99 for this at Bed Bath & Beyond, but that was with a 20% coupon. Normally it sells for $39.99. Uh, the claims are that it has a long battery life, adjustable stand, three speeds, folding design for easy storage. I would say that would fold down pretty nicely. Whisper quiet can be extended up to 40 inches or folded down to 4.5 inches. Now there's no reviews on Bed Bath & Beyond where I bought it at, but there's some reviews for a horribly overpriced version on uh, Amazon and hopefully some other vendors come along and lower the price of that because it's, it's ridiculous where it's at right now. But those who posted on Amazon, people who liked it said it was easy to set up, easy to adjust, can be used anywhere and it's lightweight. But those who didn't like it said it didn't last very long while some said the fan was too weak. Size wise, it weighs about two pounds. Folded, it's about four and a half inches tall. It's about eight inches around to unfold it. just unfolds like this. And the stand telescopes, which is a little bit stiff, at least in my model it is. And then this comes up like that. And then you've got, this is uh, about 40 inches. This table's 36 inches tall and you can see it peaks up right above that. I think I actually measured it at 41 inches. They say 40, but close enough. Battery takes about four hours to charge. You can run it while it's plugged in though, which is kind of nice. To turn it on, you gotta hold it for three seconds. If you don't read the instructions real well, you might hit it and think it doesn't work. You gotta, you gotta turn it on for three seconds to turn it on and turn it off. Uh, low, you're gonna get about nine, 10 hours of battery life. Medium, you'll get about five or six, and on high, you'll probably get about two. It rotates this way, but not, not this way. Low isn't really very impressive, it's, it, but you know, sometimes you don't need a lot of breeze, you just need something. Medium, that's kind of what I would probably leave it on if I was gonna use it all day long. And high, it's probably a bit too high. I don't think I would need that much. Once it's going, you really don't think about it being anything but just a regular small desk or floor fan. So to close it back up, you have to lift up this lock here, fold it down, fold that back. 
It doesn't always line up perfectly when you're closing it, but you get used to it after a couple tries. This is not the first My Fold Away product I've done. Back in 2017, I did a collaboration with the Two Cent Chicks when we did the My Fold Away mirror, which wasn't very impressive. This one I think is a lot better. And speaking of the Two Cent Chicks, my friend Kathy did review this about a year ago. I actually messaged her and asked her how her, it was holding up and she said she loved it but after six months the battery stopped holding the charge so i don't know if that's unique to her situation or not now i know that the box that i have is different than the box that she has i don't know if it's maybe changed since then if the battery's been improved or not let's head out the garage and do a few tests all right let's just do a quick comparison of the my full away rechargeable fan with a normal desk fan and a normal floor fan now obviously it's not going to be as powerful as this one but maybe it can kind of uh, substitute for either one in a pinch let's check it out all right so what i did here is i put this meter in front of all three fans at one foot now this doesn't measure volume it only measures wind speed so keep that in mind at first it looked like this fan and the floor fan are way ahead of the my fold away but when i moved back to the three feet still on low the my fold away was actually detecting a little bit stronger wind speed Move back to six feet, even more of a difference. The desk fan's kind of fading and my fold away fan kind of hanging in there. At nine feet, both of the small fans were completely undetectable on low, while the floor fan was still doing well. At this point, I moved the my fold away fan to its maximum range on high, which I determined to be about 12 feet. At 12 feet, the desk fan was not detectable at all, but the floor fan was still going strong. Even though it, it can't clearly can't compete with a floor fan, it, I would say I'll perform to uh, desk fan that actually plugs into the wall so i do think it did a pretty good job this one has a much larger range pushes much more air look at the size of the blades though but this one does have at least about a 12 foot range i would say on high so not too bad really all right so i've had the go fan cool mist on my desk for a few months it's worked well it's pretty small though but it does clip onto the side of the desk so it kind of stays out of the way now with my fold away fan i if i leave it here it's going to take up desk space but luckily i don't have to i can actually put it on the floor and extend it and I can even leave it plugged in if I had to, so I don't have to worry about charging it. It is versatile, and it can definitely replace a desk fan without even taking up any space. So in the end, I actually kind of like the My Fold Away rechargeable fan. It kind of bridges the gap between a large floor fan and a small desk fan. It can kind of fill both roles, maybe a little bit big for a desk fan, a little bit small for a floor fan. But overall, I think it does a pretty good job. I do think that 40 bucks seems like a lot for a fan like this. Even 32 with my coupon seems a bit high. This doesn't seem like more than a $20 fan to me. I'll be curious to see if it holds up for me longer than it did for Kathy. So check back in about another year and I'll let you know how that went. But once you get past the cost, I do think that it works pretty much as advertised. For the final item, it's a folding cutlery set. Good for hiking, camping, even the office if you have plastic silverware and don't want to use that. Let's check out the unboxing and see how that went. All right, this is the Hikincher cutlery set. Kind of a nice nylon pouch. Actually, it's very small. I thought this was going to be bigger than that. Very small. Whoa. I paid uh, $9.80 for this. The claims are it's a four-in-one cutlery set, includes detachable fork, spoon, knife, and bottle opener. They say it's lightweight, rust-free, good for hiking, backpacking, camping, and fishing. Uh, the people who liked it on Amazon said that it's better than using plasticware. Good sizes for the utensils. Durable and well-made. The people who didn't like it said it was kind of flimsy. The knife isn't really a knife. It's a poorly designed bottle opener. This doesn't come with any instructions, but there is an instructional video on the Amazon page. So what you're supposed to do is fold the fork out, push it down, and it detaches. And if you want to use the knife, you could use uh, the knife and fork together like that. So putting them back together, line up these two notches. Push the fork up, and I think that's it. So to test this out, I figured that a fork and a spoon are gonna be kind of easy to try out, but the knife I wasn't too sure about. So first up, let me try some knife tests, not just cutting, but also spreading as well to see how it goes. All right, let's do a couple of tests to see how this knife actually works in real world scenarios. How about spreading some peanut butter and jelly on a sandwich? It's supposed to be a fully functional knife, so let's see. One thing I do notice that when you, when you hold the knife, you, kept, you definitely have a spoon in your palms. You can definitely feel the peanut butter dropping off where the, the bottle opener part's at. But you know, it's working. I have some uh, grape jelly a little bit further down here, so I have to kind of reach my way into it. Not really holding the jelly too well. The jelly's just kind of sliding right off. I'll, I'll try to work with it here. 
Maybe I'll just do it like this. <laughs> I don't know because it doesn't really grab any of it. There's not enough surface area for it to really uh, hold much. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's probably too much now. But, you know, maybe I'm camping and I'm making myself a sandwich. I got to sacrifice, right? We got to rough it here. Maybe not quite as good as a regular knife, but I did it. How if I try to cut a piece of a uh, piece of cheese here? <laughs> I'm not sure how that's going to go. Let's see. Oh, you know, it's not bad. It's not perfect, but it's not. It actually really isn't that as bad as I thought it was going to be. The knife's pretty sharp. It's not. It really isn't that terrible. It's usable. It wouldn't be my first choice for a knife, but, you know, it, it does cut. So it does what it's supposed to do. Maybe not as good as a real thing, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is to have a small knife that's compact. And so far, it's working pretty well. All right, so besides just testing out the knife, I have been using the cutlery set for, well, it's supposed to be just one week, but as I said earlier, it's stretched out for over three weeks now. It's been the only cutlery set I've used for three weeks. I've used it for breakfast. I've used it for lunch. I've used it for dinner. I've taken it to restaurants. I've used it everywhere. And my final observations are that the one commenter who said that the knife is more of a blade than a knife, I agree with that. It can work as a knife in a pinch, but it's not really a full knife. And the only other con that I have is that I think that the overall length is a little bit short for me. Compared to the small fork I have in my cutlery set, that's the small one. You can see it's even smaller than that. And this is the large fork I have in my cutlery set. So it's, it's a lot smaller than I'm used to using. I wish it was about an inch longer. I know it's supposed to be compact, but... I'm nitpicking, but the length is something that I continually notice as being a little bit on the small side. But even with my cons aside, I do think that it's very nice, it's compact, I can see a lot of use for this. My cons are not meant to be a disapproval of the product, I'm just trying to point out any potential pitfalls for people who are going to buy it. If I was looking for a cutlery set for hiking, camping, RVing, backpacking, I would probably recommend this because it's actually pretty good. And I think it actually is deserving of the high ratings that it has on Amazon. All right, so in the end, if I had to give a quick one sentence recap of each one of these, I would say the folding Ray-Ban Wayfarer sunglasses, expensive, but pretty nice. The folding keyboard, I would say disappointing, but your mileage may vary. For the pillow pad, I would say imperfect, but a logical improvement over the original. The My Fold Away rechargeable fan, a nice way to bridge the gap between desk fan and floor fan. For the cutlery set, I would say the knife isn't great, but overall quite useful. Well, that's all I've got. If you've used any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.